having one of your most successful seasons, but we want to get a day in the life of you and I'm your recruit today. So where do we start? First thing we do usually when recruits come is we'll talk to them about sizing and stuff, obviously for uniforms, try to get that on the map, on the radar. After that, we'll get some sizes, obviously for day-to-day -day gear, practice gear, shorts, t-shirts, hoodies, the whole works here as you can kind of see. Kind of like to see what the players like in terms of cleats, turfs, guys have preferred. Some guys like molded, some guys like spikes. So try to get a little bit of what the guy likes to wear, what he feels comfortable in, and go from there. Well, today let's start head to toe. I know I'm gonna have to take my regular Stanford hat off and put a baseball one on. Baseball caps are all over here. So these are our three game hats. We got the just old Stanford S, we have the block S with the tree, and then we have the all black block S with the tree over here. You tell me, wh which combo am I going for today? Black's kind of the favorite right now. So okay. black, black on white has kind of been a favorite of our guys this year. This was brand new last year. We were a little nervous about the fan base. We have a fan base that's pretty traditional, traditional, right. but it, it got a really good reception um, and we have a pretty good winning record in black. As you go into the second or the bottom floor, we have a locker room, state of the art, um, allows our players again to really embody that formation and allows them to be with each other. That locker room allows our players to have a space to be able to be with one another, but it also allows our players to develop. We can use it for team meetings, scouting report meetings, anything like that. But more importantly, the structure of the locker room is set up so that all of the benches are facing each other. And that was done on purpose to allow, again, our players to engage with each other, know them as a teammate, but also know them as a person. Right here, this is the first place when our players or recruits come in. So we really wanted to highlight what Adidas does for our program. So we've got our jerseys, our hats, and all the cleats that they might wear during a season. The first one is, the July 4th game, it resembles a bomb pop. If you remember those popsicles they used to make, that's why there's ridges on it. These are some of the cleats that they'll wear on Father's Day. This is a special Memorial Day cleat. It's got the icon right there for it. What Adidas does though, is always they'll, they'll change up their bottom, whether it's chrome, gold, platinum. And then we go through our cleats that we'll wear on a, on a daily basis. These cleats are black and maroon cleats. They'll be worn with our Aggies uniform, and they'll also be worn with our gray at times. It just depends. The starting pitcher might say, I want to wear the black cleats today. He gets to pick them. We're standing here, right here in PK Park. People get the name confused, and why is that? Everybody associates the University of Oregon with Phil Knight, his excellence, Nike, you know, and that's PK, there's your initials. Ironically, the most influential person at our field is Pat Kilkenny. And so the PK here is for specifically Pat Kilkenny. We've got it named Pat Kilkenny Park for that reason, and he's the man. Yeah, definitely. Now we're gonna go in and check out your awesome facilities, but starting here at PK Park, you guys have a tremendous relationship with Field Turf, and they created you know, everything as far as the surfacing. How true does that infield really play? The infield's unbelievable. You know, initially their first product for baseball was poor, probably more of a uh, football type field turf, maybe a little bit slower for baseball. They took the technology and all the information they gained out of 10 years of being in the business and they crushed it with this product. And so what they did is they have different fills and different things that they put inside the turf for different heights and different speeds of the turf. So where the infield plays a little bit quicker, obviously, than the outfield, and there's different heights and different feelings on the infield around the outfield warning track to where an outfielder, as he approaches the wall, understands he's coming close to the wall just by some of the product they put in and specifically on our infield. It's got some crushed olive in there with the sand and the traditional rubber pellets, and they've just nailed the product and it's been playing great. Well, this is our new weight room that opened up in January of 2023, so it's not even a year old. And basically the old weight room was pretty much right where we're standing back in that direction, and it was about 1,300 square feet. And then we made the expansion, a $2 million expansion, all the way to the end of our concourse, and now it's about 2,800 square feet. What goes into a $2 million expansion? I know uh, the equipment has to play a big role in that. From everything I've heard, I think we spent more money on technology in this weight room than we did on the actual four walls. But we're standing next to three Proteus machines. We're the only program in the country that has three of them, so we're very, very fortunate. Our squat racks are lit up 
with LED lights. We've got TVs all over the place that our guys can watch TV or our, more importantly, their strength programs are presented on, on those TVs as they're going about their business. But you can see we're standing on a turf part of the uh, weight room right here where our guys have the ability to do different things, stretch out, push their sleds, a number of different things that they have the ability to do throughout this weight room. We're just very, very fortunate to have it. It's also very well lit in here, big branding. However, the, the biggest, most well lit piece, the attribute is the lighting on the racks. Well, that was our strength coach, Coach HR Powell. I'll give him a lot of credit for that. It certainly lights up very well and, and it brings a nice presentation to the facility. This facility has so many, you know, as we like to say, bells and whistles and just different things that um, excite our players to be able to come in here and work out and get after it every single day. All right, Carter, you guys have an amazing facility so far. Ryan showed us everything outdoors, but in here, this is where all the magic happens, right? Absolutely. You being the director of player development, how much time is spent in this area alone? This area is, is so crucial for all our guys. Our hitters and our pitchers both use this area. Obviously, we have our three batting cages. We can outfit that far tunnel down there to be a pitching development area. All the technology you can imagine is in this, in this room, whether it's TrackMan, the blast motion, the high-speed cameras, all that stuff in here we use on a daily basis. You know, we get to a point in the season where it's, it's hot and everything and we don't want to hit on the field, we'll come in here and just hit exclusively in the cages. The LED lighting in the back, neon lighting, the, the you know, banners, rafters hanging up. Is this a, an ideal spot to bring a recruit? It is. Honestly, when we bring a recruit here, we always bring them in through through these doors. Um, but even more for, for our current players, right? When they enter the stadium, they enter through these green doors over behind us and they see the history that's in here. And we want we want that for a reason. Because when you're in this building, in this part of the, of the stadium, like you're working to be on one of those boards. All right, Jay, again, this is a spacious, spacious area, man. Do you guys spend a lot of time here in the locker room? They do spend a lot of time in the locker room. Everyone has their own chair, as you can see, and they got their, you know, their name, the numbers on them. We did that on purpose because we want the guys to be comfortable. As coaches and staff, we actually stay out of here a lot, try to let it be their space. Let's actually go to one of the individual lockers yeah. and kind of just see the functionality of them. So this is one right here, this is Darren Williams. So, you know, with the COVID year and all those things that happened with all of that, he's actually in his seventh year of college. So we, we all call him Dr. Williams, call him old man, anything you can think of. He's been here for so long. But you can see how clean and organized all of his stuff is. Everyone has their own lock code and has, a, has their own charger in there, like their own outlet. Um, you know, most of them do their gloves and hats and their towel over here, a bunch of hangers. It actually vents in the bottom, as you can see, for their cleats or for their shoes or anything like that to keep them smelling good. Okay, so this is the ACC championship wall or the championship wall in general? It's the championship wall. So our, our, our players enter the facility most often through these doors right behind us. And, and there's three things that we, we want them to pass every single day. And, and one of those is our championship wall, which is here behind us. I, I think the motivational piece of, of wanting to play beyond college baseball is a, is a big piece. Um, but one of the greatest challenges is you got to have that motivation, but you got to lose yourself within the team, right? So we, we purposely have them in this order um, as you go through this hallway to know exactly how they should align. You know, you look at this wall, you got 36 big leaguers kind of spread across, you know, every major league team. It's a motivational thing. It's a motivate. If your goal is to, to, to get to the big leagues, which, which everybody's goal is, if your goal is to get to the big leagues, you pass this every day and you look at all these people that did it and understand the work that has to go in individually to have that chance. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. Personally, some of my favorite things about the Super Bowl are the watch parties, the snacks, the commercials that come out. Maybe your team even comes back from being down 28 to three like mine did one year. Not only can you bet on who you think will win Super Bowl 58, but you can also place bets on which players you think are gonna score a touchdown, how many points are gonna be scored, maybe you'll make a parlay out of it. It's really up to you. New customers, Join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit fanduel.com slash Koiski to sign up. That's fanduel.com slash Koiski. Make every moment more with Fanduel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. This is nice. Yeah. It's like a, a spaceship almost. <laughs> so obviously we have lockers for everyone. 
um, which is much different than our previous uh, locker room situation. We had some guys sharing some things, um, but one for everybody. Um, minimal furniture in here because we don't want to crowd it up too much. We have another area, um, a player's lounge and a nutrition area that has TV. So we didn't do any of that in here. Um, and then each locker has got some nice features to it. Um, you got name plates up top. They'll all be personalized when the guys come back with a headshot name, number, um, position, hometown. So that'll go all the way around the room for all 32 players. Places for hats, glove, hang things. Um, the back rest comes out. You've got a security box in here. Ooh, nice. With charging stations for phones and laptops. As we were talking, you said that this is an amazing space that you and your team use mm -hmm. on a consistent basis. So this being a player's lounge in the nutritional center, what are some things that you guys made sure that y'all embedded into this space to make it feel special for you, for the players? Well, obviously we, we had the nutrition staff help us design this and we use this area for pre-practice meals, post-game meals during the season. They make smoothies and our nutrition staff does a great job. That's a really, really good space for them. And then obviously walking in this area, you've got the three TVs behind us. You got Nintendo Switch, I guess that's what they call it. You got, <laughs> I think they play all the games that they want to play. We got a ping pong table, we got some mean ping pong games that go on all the time. You know, they're still trying to figure out that you're not supposed to put the sticks on the tables when you're done. We'll still try and teach them to put the sticks back up because that's a no-no. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, pool 101, yeah. but this is a great space for them to obviously enjoy themselves. I think a lot of thought that was put into this is to get some input from our players. Right. You know, what would you guys want for your lounge? Right. And, you know, these these are the things they brought up. This first level of O'Brien Stadium is all player amenities, all designed to house the guys, take care of the guys. Coming up upon our locker room, as you walk in, you see we have uh, 40 lockers for our our squad, just a super bright, clean environment in here to walk in and see your teammates and listen to some music, play some video games. Mr. Obrate's name and lights in the ceiling is a reminder that everything we do, well, we should sign our work with excellence, much like he did for us to give us this gift. This is a great space for the guys. As I tell them, it's their locker room. Treat this like it's your house. Take care of it, appreciate it, because we're very lucky to have a, a wonderful place to call home. Now, Coach, did I see the uh, individual locker lights come on when we walked in here? Yeah, all the lighting is uh, sensitive to motion. And so uh, that nice mood of when you walk in, the whole place just turns itself on like that, just to kind of show you that it's time to get to work. In here, what's the activity that the players play the most? Um, you get a little bit of everything. I mean, they have a lot of options. You've got some gaming consoles that are tucked away uh, underneath the TVs. Uh, you got the Papa Shot, which everybody's always trying to set that high score. The beeping arcade machine. It's got Golden Tee, which, you know, guys love to play. It's kind of a nostalgic game. Some pretty crazy games of ping pong. The only rule is just don't go crashing into the wall so we don't have to replace any sheetrock. What we really like to use this room for the most, George, is that it's a place for them to gather as a group and a place to, to have team meals. All of our pregame, all of our postgame meals are also served out of the space. We've got a full service kitchen uh, right behind the, the TV and, and we want them to spend as much time together as they possibly can. Okay, Emily, this is very unique to any baseball facility. Yes. Uh, I've never seen anything like this. Uh, where are we? We are in the Wally Pontiff Jr. Hall of Fame, which like you said, is a very unique addition for a baseball stadium. Showcases all the rich history and traditions of LSU baseball and fans can come here before and during all home games. So that's kind of a neat thing, especially on some of those hot days, you can come in, get some air condition and walk around and see all the different jerseys and just the history of baseball here at LSU. What seems to be the show stopper in here as far as the fans any memorabilia that kind of sticks out I mean I think everybody always loves to see a national championship trophy because why not the 2009 case is special to me since I was I was in college and very excited that we beat Texas to get that national championship and then it's just kind of neat to see all the stuff that you wouldn't have known about before unless you came in here Not only are we at Mississippi State Baseball, we are in the one, the only, Stark Vegas. Tell me about the history of this place and your storied baseball program. I think when you look around college baseball, a lot of things started here. You know, we brag all the time, it's the biggest place for college baseball. The first uh, ESPN game was here. You know, all the rigs and the tailgating. I think we hold the biggest on-campus record, a bunch of them, biggest regional, biggest super regional. So a lot's been done here with our community and they built a facility to kind of 
recognize that. Awesome. What would you say is your favorite part of this facility? You know, as a coach, you like the player development side, the Palmero Center, the weight room, all the different, the pitching lab, the things that we can train our guys the best with. Obviously, when you walk out that dugout on a Friday night and all the grills are rolling, it's pretty special. So that's a neat part of it too. But as a coach, you like, uh, you can just get a lot of work done here. All right, Danny, you guys had a, a big part in making this facility as amazing as it is. What are some of the interactive pieces and elements to this place that make it amazing? This lobby here is really the, the front door to this facility. And so it had to be versatile. So one thing that we have is this really large video board. You can really tailor the content for each of those audiences. I think one of the main things is, is these College World Series trophies. Each has a button that's associated with it that activates content on that video board. There's the 1989 World College World Series. Then we get some images served up for the additional World Series. Let's see if we can get 2018 up there. So again, it just gives these fans a place to really interact with these trophies, see some of that story, be reminded of that history. And then, you know, one of the kind of surprise features is we've got a selfie moment built in. And so there's actually a touch screen here that attaches to a camera that's right over here. And then by touching that, you're able to take a picture of yourself with all of the College World Series trophies. So you can stand up here with your friends, family, and really take advantage of your opportunity here. It's not just digital technology, it's this grand Arkansas baseball here with the backlit letters. And so we're here in the daytime, but if you think about a night game, that's just glowing from the exterior. And so it's kind of this beacon bringing you in, in this huge brand moment. And then if we look up above, there's the Razorback right on the ceiling. So kind of one of those unexpected things. You'd walk in the space, see the video board, see the letters, and then all of a sudden you kind of look up and have that little surprise.